Hi everyone, this is Holly. Today I have four fall DIYs for you because that's all I had time to edit. <laughs> but I actually made eight, so come back Tuesday and I will have the other four up for you for a total of eight fall DIYs. And then we are moving on to Christmas. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. For the next project, I'm going to be working with Dollar Tree Metal Ribbon. And I'm just cutting off a little tag there. And I chose to measure out approximately four inch little strips and I was really happy that regular scissors do cut this but I did go grab some cheaper two dollar scissors to use because I'm sure it's dulling the blade maybe not maybe it's sharpening it here is some wire from ribbon you know how you get wired ribbon when I don't want it and I pull it out I save that because it's very petite and it can come in very handy when you need a discreet wire somewhere. So now I'm shaping them into little circles and you just kind of have to work with them a little bit if they get a bit, you know, not warped, I guess, but not quite the circle. They're easy to do, they're, they're easy to bend. So I just made as perfect of circles as I could and then I am threading through these wires where the, there, I have looked now here's the tricky part, you have to find a connection. So when I join the ribbon together, I'm looking for holes in areas that have an actual border all the way around, right? Because when you put your wire through, you can't have it slip out. So you have to find like little circles and you have to find them on either edge on the left hand side and the right hand side. I'm showing you here with the arrows. I do make connections as close as possible to the edge of either side of that uh, metal ribbon with the wires so that the edges lay as flush and flat as possible with each other and it's also necessary support when we move on to our next step so when i'm all done doing that i twist them you know you saw me twist and tighten them up but connecting them i did try with black ribbon which or not black ribbon connecting them i tried with black wire which i did show you a really fast glimpse of and it was it's sharp enough in there where when i was pulling the wire through it was getting stuck it was pulling it was cutting and it didn't have as much flexibility. If you wanna use wire, you can, but I opted to use this twine, and this is actually the Dollar Tree nautical rope pulled apart in all the little pieces, and I'm showing you here. See how there's that edge there? I'm showing you here, don't have it facing upwards. Face it down, because it's more discreet that way. You know, when you're, when you're gonna form, we're making a pumpkin, in case you didn't guess, and when you form that little pumpkin on the inside center, you want that seam facing downwards. One, it's not as sharp if you pick it up, although you're not ever gonna come into contact with this in the end by how I make it. That's my cat, sorry if you can hear my cat in the background. <laughs> he always wants to come in when I'm talking. But I do tie them all together using twine. It works better for me. And I'm using some hot glue there because I don't want that twine to come undone down the road. So I'm just kind of securing it with a little bit of hot glue and my glue gun. I'm gonna tie the final piece in place. And I put a little hot glue on the end of that and twirled it with my finger. I am using low heat hot glue right now so I could touch it pretty fast. Be careful if you're gonna do that. If you're using a high heat glue gun, you have to wait for it to cool, but it makes it really pointy and easy to thread through. So when all the little connections are done on either side of the seams, I'm showing you right there, I add a little bit, well, first I place the circles as spread out as I can, you know, because you're forming a pumpkin there as evenly as possible in between each circle. I put a little hot glue to kind of help hold that together. And I'm showing you that these are the Dollar Tree plastic little jars that you can find there. That is what fit my center beautifully. And that's what I decide to put in my center. I just put hot glue all the way around it and then push it in gently. And this is the time you can see I'm moving the circle right there. From the top view there, if you see some of your circles are not evenly spread out, that is the time to use your fingers like I am and manipulate them so that they're as evenly spread as they possibly can be. Now this lid forms a perfect little bowl for the Spanish moss for the next step, so I was really happy about that. And of course, these are some stems I got on Amazon. I can't find the stems still, even though I moved across the entire United States to the East Coast. I am still struggling to find those sticks in the Dollar Tree. So I ordered them off of Amazon and I can provide the link down below. I hope I remember to do that. If I don't, I apologize. I'm gonna try and put that link in there. And now I'm taking some pewter gray and I'm just painting the twine so that it's not visible, you know, just when you look at the pumpkin. It works out brilliantly. And I decide to go ahead and put some of the Spanish moss on the underside of this little pumpkin too. I'm doing it right there. And that way the center is just metal and moss and it looks stunning. It is so beautiful. It's 
So you just press that in. I grab an autumn leaf. This is one of the Dollar Tree florals. I'm going to just do my little bits of embellishment now. I'm going to put an autumn leaf in there. I make a raffia bow. I stick it down with hot glue, of course, but I decide that it's not quite high enough. I just needed a little bit more bulk there. And this is, you know, just have fun with this. This is completely where your artsy side comes out. Do whatever makes you happy and what you think looks good. I ended up adding a second bow just to come up a little bit more. And there's a little twirly thing that was on one of the flower stem little picks that I got from Dollar Tree. And I thought well, that would be perfect for a pumpkin. So I stick it in there and we're all done. Look at that. I love, love this. For this next project, you're just going to grab one of these cute little paddles from the Dollar Tree and remove the front sign there. It's that front sign that gives this DIY weight and makes it feel more expensive for sure. Especially when you go and you glue it on with hot glue afterwards, it adds even more weight. And I went ahead and took all the paper off. I have a feeling these are going to be out again at Christmas time because they were out during summer. I think it's gonna be a regular little shape that we see for a while, which is great because it's a nice change. Super cute little cutting board. But I'm just gonna show you how you can take these to the next level. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster for my first coat. That's what I thought I wanted it to be. And I end up changing my mind and doing, well, I do the white acrylic paint over this color, but I still wanted to put the Waverly on first because it's very much a one coat paint and it blocks out the darkness. You know, I wanted a really bright white. So I went ahead and did one layer with the Waverly chalk paint to really block out that I don't know, MDF board, I guess, the brown color. And now I'm putting on the next layer, which is the, it's just white. It's just white apple barrel paint. And I'm drying in between each one. And I'm using one of those little scoring tools there to hold it down. So I, you know, the board doesn't blow away when you're blow drying. If you have a heat gun and it doesn't make any wind, that's even better. Now I'm scoring my board. So ironically, I don't use that scoring tool. I prefer using the little craft blades and actually cutting a groove that's pretty deep into my craft so that it looks and feels more legit. And next I'm taking this part here and I'm showing you how I distress it and make it look more like a craft store item instead of Dollar Tree. If it had glitter, I would have sanded off the glitter gently, but I just took some burnt umber in you know from apple barrel paint that color is just a darker brown color and i dry brushed it on there and wiped some off here and there with a baby wipe wherever i needed to but you just kind of keep working with it until you get the look that you want or that you like and using more hot glue to glue it down and next we're going to take some of the nautical rope from the dollar tree and wrap up the top which again adds more weight so this DIY has a lot of weight when it's done and actually feels really good quality. With the seasonal decor, I do like to keep them thinner, I'm being honest, so that you can store more stuff in your little craft boxes because I don't want 10 boxes for each season of decor. I, I just don't, I have the room to store it, but I just don't wanna travel that heavy anymore. So <laughs> I want a lot of stuff, but I wanna keep it down to like no more than two plastic containers. So the thin stuff is great for that. Look how nice this came out, I love this. For this project, I used two of these Dollar Tree pumpkins. They are the one with the ugly football right there on the back of it. <laughs> the other one has another, you'll see it in a minute. But I was gonna go with the Dollar Tree stick on tile next to this one, you can see it right there, but I opted to go with this print 
instead because it's easier to put on and not have to worry about being even with the side little see how the other one has like the side little um, dots that's really hard to get it even when you're putting it on upside down so I went with this one instead and I just used scissors to cut around this pumpkin and then for the fine little areas like the stem I'm using a utility knife to cut the rest off Here's the other pumpkin right here. <laughs> That's the other one that I used. So I'm about to show you the neatest hack ever. I'm just taking white acrylic paint from Apple Barrel Paints. You want it to be more of a transparent paint. You don't want chalk paint here, although I think it still would work. And what you're gonna do is paint it with really thick paint, and then you're gonna go about removing the paint. So this is like a never before seen on YouTube thing because usually the tiles that people use and I used in my Easter video are the silver ones that are really, they have the high bumps but then you have to let it dry, then you gotta dry brush it to bring the design back out. I wanna show you guys a really quick, easy way to bring out these gorgeous designs. They don't look gold anymore, they actually look gray, and look at that, look at that. It's absolutely simple to do. You are literally painting it and removing the paint. Just enough so you can see the design. You don't wanna keep removing and removing, or you, well, maybe you do want the gold to show through, I didn't. So I don't mind on the stems so much, but I didn't want them to show on the pumpkin. But I do the same thing to the other pumpkin, and now we have these gorgeous designs. And by the way, these are my little French country themed pumpkins for those of you, because I have a lot of people out there that follow me for French country DIYs. So I thought I should throw one in there this fall season. This is perfect for that kind of decor. It's perfect for other decor too, but this is definitely a beautiful fall decor piece for if you're, you know, if you're into the French country. So for the stems, I go ahead and remove most of the paint on purpose. I don't get too much of a gold sheen because there's still enough on there to make it look matte, so it's not shiny. But I'm actually using what's already there naturally, just the darker color of gold, to make my stems. So all you have to do for that is you're just rubbing, like I said, most of the paint off, not all of it. You don't want the shine to come through, or maybe you do, I didn't. But you just want like an antique gold without any shine to come through. So it almost looks like an aged gold. And I'm even going down at an angle. You can't see it so much right now, but there's like, I'm putting little subtle dry brushing little marks to make the top of the stem that goes down a little bit on the pumpkin. Just gonna give these guys a quick blow dry here and make sure that they're really, really dry. Next, because this is in the theme of a lighter decor, I just went ahead and painted the sides of each one of these pumpkins white. For this next part, you wanna choose your softest brush. Look at how the paint stains the brush here. That brush is totally clean, but the orange paint stains it. Because I used acrylic paint for this trick, it doesn't have a lot of adhesion power because it is on a shiny surface. So what I chose to do was to squirt some Mod Podge on it, rather heavy, use a very soft chip brush, touch very lightly, and you can see the amount of times I go over it. Did you see that? I just make sure it's covered and then I stop brushing because if you brush too much, you'll actually remove your paint. You just want to get it sealed so it's sealed. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this some garnish and I have these little flowers, they're dried. And oh my gosh, it took me about 20 minutes to remember where I got these from. This is from the Dollar Tree Potpourri. I saw them in there and I thought, oh, these are awesome. So I pulled them out of the potpourri set and kept them. And I have two of them. For this craft, because I am gonna stick in the theme here of French country, but you can certainly make this farmhouse depending on what embellishments you add. You could make it just regular decor for, you could even make this modern decor. This is one of those pumpkins that can lean in any direction so it makes it very versatile for that reason but I'm gonna go ahead and use some of the crochet that is sold at the Dollar Tree and some of the Dollar Tree lace I also used some of the Dollar Tree light burlap that came in a roll during the summer and I just cut them in strips and kind of crisscrossed it like I did with the ribbon on the top I'm sorry you could, I didn't show that but you could see it on the top what I did with the ribbon I also did it with the burlap underneath the ribbon so now I'm taking and using some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope, I take that apart because you get these really, really thin pieces of twine, which I love. It's a little bit thinner than the one they actually sell that's thin at the Dollar Tree, which I haven't been able to find recently. That's why I've been doing it this way. But I tie a knot on the bottom. I'm showing you what I do. And I put a little bit of glue on that knot, wipe it off, and kind of twirl it with my fingers to make sure, you know, I press down, twirl it with my fingers and make sure that it stays in a knot so my beads don't fall off in the future. 
Please excuse my fingers too. I was actually gardening and I was reaching into a rose bush and it scratched my arm, it bruised my hand, it chipped all my nail polish off. <laughs> gardening is so hard on you and I'm not careful, I move fast, so I tend to get injured even though I'm having a good time. So another little trick too, if you can't get this twine to go through, is you put some hot glue on the tip of it, which I'm gonna do here. I am using a low heat. Well, I have, it's a Gorilla Glue Gun, but I have the option of high heat or low heat. I work with low heat whenever I can because I have just been burned too many times severely where it's kept me awake at night, it's so painful. When I do need to, when I do need to use high heat, I go very slow and I'm very careful because there are some crafts, especially crafts, if you wanna put them outside, you probably should turn up your glue gun. Like I made an apple bucket one year during fall and that one did require high heat glue and good quality glue for it to stay together. But it's a good little trick. You wait for it to cool down a little bit, twirl it with your fingers, and then it's more like a needle and it makes it super easy for you to thread the beads through or whatever you want to thread. And then I'm just tying it on in a knot exactly what I did on the other side I'm gonna do on both sides. And then I'm just gonna grab it in the middle, let them both hang down, and then glue that on the pumpkin. I decided to use two beads for the shorter pumpkin and three beads for the taller pumpkin, just to make them a little bit different but complementary to each other. So I just saved the leaves off of the Dollar Tree florals. These are the ones that actually came with this year's fall florals. And I cut them separately, as you can see, and then I trimmed them to look more like a pumpkin leaf. Sometimes I leave them. It depends. Depends on how it looks. Sometimes, again, for a little variation, because pumpkin leaves aren't uniform all the time with each pumpkin, I will trim one smaller, and other times I will leave it the way that it came. So I glue the leaf down, and then I use the crochet bow, and I glue that on top of the leaf. And I did the exact same thing for the other pumpkin. Lastly, I added those cute little dried flowers to the top of the bow. And here's what they looked like when they were all done. I think they came up very beautiful. For this next project, I'm using the Dollar Tree pumpkins. I thought that the design and feel of them was really nice. They were heavy, but they just looked cheap, and I think it was that print right there. I didn't like that. I liked the front pumpkin. So I'm just peeling the paper off, and I do end up spraying it. You'll see her later. That little spatula on the side there, though, is wonderful for scraping things off and getting under the paper. I'm just, I tend to be impatient. I know if I had squirted this ahead of time, it would have just rolled right off, but I, it still worked, I got everything off. For the next step, I'm aiming to make this pumpkin look more like the orange one, but just a complimentary look. So I'm starting off with some white apple barrel acrylic paint. I put way too much on there, so I had to put some back in the jar. But I'm gonna go ahead and paint the front of it and the sides. And I don't know if it's my imagination, but I could swear apple barrel paint made their white less transparent. I seem to remember using it years ago and you had to do two coats and now I notice one coat if you're really generous with it does the job. So the next thing is painting the side here because even though the side was already brown you could tell it was that MDF board and I just didn't like the look of that so I took some nutmeg brown from apple barrel paint just painted the side and now I'm taking the same color nutmeg brown and I'm going to add some I guess distressing and contrast to this. I'm just going to make it look a little bit more rustic and a little bit more like it's on a farm for fall and pumpkin patches and just my taste my style here and i'm leaving this in because i thought well i could just say i dry brushed but i didn't quite just dry brush i did some other steps here and when you see the final product you won't know how i got there unless i kind of show you the steps so i did try to shorten it down as much as possible but the next step i do is i take a chip brush and i'm just doing some dry brushing with the white paint and i don't like it and after i'm done with this I'm like, that's way too streaky and weird looking. The method or technique that I used on the big pumpkin didn't go down so well on the 
little pumpkins. So I take a baby wipe and I just start wiping it off to get kind of a cloudy look. That's what I'm after now is more of a cloudy soft look on top of it. And then I'm just distressing the edges with the white paint. See right there on the right hand side? I thought, I don't like that either. I did too much. So I wiped that off a little bit, went around, controlled the distressing, and then I decided to take a baby wipe and wipe in the middle of each one of those bigger brown spots. See how that, see the effect you get? That's a nice little trick. I love that look. I love that look when you kind of break up the circle a bit and make it look almost like a knot in a tree. Maybe the opposite, because knots are usually dark in the center, I think, but still it looks really nice. And then I just take the baby wipe and I'm also wiping around the words, fall vibes. I wipe off the paint around those words to make sure that they pop. Now I'm taking the Dollar Tree little wooden plaque here and again started off putting the antique wax. That's what I'm using. You can use any antique wax. I started putting it on with a baby wipe and it just sticks too much on top. Every time I try it on raw wood, I'm always unhappy. And the little trick that I do is I just add water to it. It's that simple and use a brush and it glides on beautifully. I'm also a big fan of a water-based acrylic stain that is also really glidy and beautiful that I have down in my description box from Amazon. So if you don't like working with the wax for some reason, it does take a little longer to dry. You can always use the water-based stain. It looks the same, just as slippery. On wood, it definitely has a better glide factor and it's also unscented. So either one is very acceptable. I'm just using up what I have. So I'm using the same bow that I took off in the beginning. That bow actually came with it, but I thought it was a really nice bow. And instead of doing wooden beads, I decided to use these little, they call them decorations because I think you can either, depending, they don't say it's an apple or a pumpkin because I think depending on how you paint it, you can make it look either way. I mentioned that in the video from last week. And I'm gonna use those as the wooden beads. I thought that would be so cute and so different. So I'm just taking a little bit of raffia, tying a knot on the end of it, and then pushing it down into the little crevice. There's like a crevice, because these are supposed to be little pumpkins or apples. You can push it down where it kind of disappears a little bit behind the stem, and that worked fine. And then I'm putting my bow back on after I glue those two little pieces of raffia down. It's just, this is really simple. This is what I was after, more of a just really you know, when you go in Hobby Lobby, you don't see the cheap paper on top of the crafts that much. So you can always take Dollar Tree stuff and just really level them up just by removing the paper or in some cases the glitter and painting it. And suddenly it's a higher end looking craft. I'm adding a stand, wooden little cute pumpkins hanging off, gluing it together now using Gorilla Glue. And I was really shocked that not that much effort took this from just meh <laughs> you could tell it was like a dollar tree decor piece to like oh wow that looks like it came from hobby lobby that's really nice look at that If you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I love reading your comments please comment like share it really does help me here on YouTube and don't forget to come back two days from now on Tuesday for part two there's another awesome four DIYs I want to share with you before we move into the Christmas season and as always until the next one breathe deep fret not and do things that make you happy